here is the problem. A lot of creators are being forced into the landscape of videography due to the social economy with reels, TikTok, shorts, and you're told by a YouTuber to go buy this video gear and try this out, but the reality is you go purchase that gear and then you're in over your head because you don't know how to use it and it's overwhelming. Now when it comes to video editing specifically, you got a couple options. You can spend a lot of money on Final Cut Pro, you can do an absurd subscription to Adobe Premiere and still not know how to use it. Then you've got DaVinci Resolve, which is free, but the learning curve in that program is massive. And that's where the sponsor of today's video comes in, and it's CapCut. This program is packed and easy to use as well. There's an app for your phone, and most of this stuff you can do on your phone as well. So let's dive into it. So when you arrive in CapCut, the layout is pretty intuitive and actually quite similar to some of the other editing apps as well. On the left side here, you have your media. Once you import all your media, you can start throwing it down onto the timeline here, and it's all very easy. If you guys don't know how to do this stuff yet, I suggest going and finding a basic CapCut tutorial, watching that, and then coming back to some of the more advanced stuff. But the first thing that I wanted to do was find a track that works. Now, of course, they have tons of audio in here. They've got music, they've got stuff that is trending on TikTok. So if you're trying to make shorts, they've already got the music here that you are gonna to wanna to use. But for my purposes, I wanted to import a track that I use from Musicbed. So I've gone ahead and imported that into my media. Now, once you have your music track in CapCut, whether you're pulling one from their TikTok library or you're bringing one from outside, this is where the AI is such a beauty and it helps so much. Click on your music track and then up here, this flag has AI underneath it. We're gonna click that and we're gonna click on these beats. And what it's gonna do is you can see here, it's creating these little nodes on your music. And I'm actually gonna click on beats two and you're gonna see it's actually gonna start putting nodes on the beat of your song, which is absolutely incredible. You can do this in other programs. It just takes a heck of a lot longer. So now once you have those beats, you can start cutting your tracks to those beats. And what's beautiful about this is it actually snaps into place. So if I zoom here and I see this beat, I can drag this over to that beat. Likewise here, you can see those beats and we want our clips to cut and land on those beats. So, so easy. So you can see here, if I play through this, you can see and feel the beats. The next thing I wanna talk about is color grading. As you guys can see on this timeline, I'm editing with log footage. With other professional software, of course you can edit log footage, but I wanted to showcase to you guys how you can shoot in log and maximize the camera that you guys have in its dynamic range and still edit it within CapCut. So if you wanted to do a custom color adjustment, so say you're not using log footage, you can just come up to this adjustment tab, grab one of these and lay it down on your timeline. You can put this at the beginning and then if you're just shooting with iPhone footage, whatever you want, you can see on this right side here, you can add brightness, contrast, saturation, you can do anything you want in here. But what I wanna do because I'm using log footage is I wanna convert that log footage back into the Rec. 709. So I'm going to go over to this LUT panel, which is in the top left, and I've actually imported the V-Log to Rec. 709. So I'm just gonna take that and we're just gonna drag it down onto the timeline and pull that across all of our clips. So now you can see very quickly, all of these have already adjusted to Rec. 709, has the contrast back and saturation. And one amazing feature is if you come up to the top right, you can go to this color oscilloscope button turn that on and then here you get professional graphs like waveforms, vector scopes and RGB. So then if you wanna make sure you're not crushing any details in your blacks and your highlights aren't overexposed, you can see those details in your waveforms here. So professional feature in a free video editing application. This is amazing. The second thing that I wanted to do was actually add one of my personal LUTs. So I'm gonna turn this off. All right, so here is the desaturated LUT. I'm gonna put that over top of the other layer. And then again, everything underneath this layer is going to have that LUT. So I can just click in here and we can go to see that desaturated LUT and we're actually gonna bring that down. 
so it's not as strong. You can just dial in whatever LUTs to whatever strength you want. Now, if you want, you can go into each one of these adjustments, and if it's too contrasty, you can pull out the contrast. There's so much that you guys can do, as well as changing the colors in your HSL and your curves as well if you wanna add more pop. A lot of this actually reminds me of Premiere, but it's way easier to use. Now let's talk about transition and effects. Again, you can spend a ton of money in those other editing platforms to get the same effects that you can get in here. One effect that I saw here was that I had two shots were actually very similar, transitioning from this Porsche into the Turbo S. So it was very easy for me to go and find a transition that had a color glitch. As you can see there, that's in here. And then I found this other great effect where it looks like it scans over the car. So I had this idea that maybe I can use a glitch effect and this scanning tool to make these cars look like they're transforming into each other. And so it was super easy to use. And as you can see, if I play through this, it looks like it kind of transforms that car with similar clips. Another one that I found that was super fun was the black and white filter on this blue Porsche. And then I used that same effect to turn the black and white video into color. It was very easy to do. All I did was put this black and white filter on, keyframe from here, I hit this keyframe button at 100, and when it was done scanning over the car, I put a keyframe at the end to turn that strength back down to zero. So that from here to here, it starts to, and maybe I should even move this over a little bit because it doesn't look like that accurate. If I move that over, once it scans over the car, as it passes over the car, you can see that the strength of that black and white filter goes down and it looks like it transitions to color. Very easy to use these effects. You just drag and drop them over. You can change the strength of them. You can add keyframes really easy. Now, the desktop version is powerful, but where you really find this thing stands out is on the phone. Now, I wanna show you how quickly it is to do trending stuff in your phone with speed ramping. So for this quick video, I picked the track really quickly going into the sounds, came over to these heat buttons, so I found something that was trending, and I just dropped that in here really quick. So I wanted to do some speed ramping. So you just click on your clip, hit the speed button. I tapped the curve, then edited my own custom so I could sync the speed ramps to the beat of the song. So you can see it's very easy. You just hit play. You can create or delete these nodes or beats. You can see on the top right there, it says add beat. And then you just drag that and speed it up how you want. If you drag those nodes up, you're speeding it up to 10 times. If you bring it back to one times, you're using your regular speed. So it was super easy to speed ramp and create transitions on this one shot. Now, because I was speed ramping, I wanted to add motion blur. In Final Cut or other programs, adding motion blur can really bog down your system and take quite a long time. In CapCut on your mobile, there's a button right on the bottom here. You just hit motion blur and you can pick how much motion blur you want. So let's say we add I don't know, 15, and we hit go. Another thing in Final Cut Pro that I really struggle with is the stabilization in there really sucks, and it's built into the phone here. So I can just hit stabilize, minimal cropping, and it's going to stabilize the footage for you as well. The last thing that I did here was add keyframes. So I tap that, I added a keyframe to the front of the clip, and you can see here I added a keyframe here, zoomed in, a little bit on the frame, added a keyframe there to center the Audi. And that was as easy as just pinching and moving it around where I want. And at the end here, we're gonna add a keyframe here and we are just gonna zoom in even more on this final Porsche. And you can see how easy it is for that to translate over to the phone. It's absolutely incredible. What I love about CapCut is it hits this sweet spot, filling the gap for creators that want to learn how to do video editing, but don't want to spend the money or even maybe the time to learn those intensive programs. It's very intuitive, very easy to use, and I highly encourage you, if you're stepping into the video world, start with CapCut. If you guys want to know how I capture my B-roll for car videos, there's a video here that you guys can watch. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a like. You might want to subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.